in this video we will be discussing about ureter and the part one of the video is discussed here in this video we will discuss about the extent of ureter the constrictions of ureter the relations of the abdominal part of ureter and at last we will discuss a few mcqs from this topic which are asked in various exams so first we will discuss about the extent of ureter so extent of ureter we we'll draw the diagram first. If this is the kidney, so we know that ureters are a pair of thick muscular tubes which are extending from the hilum of the kidney and which passes retroperitoneally and it opens into the bladder wall. This is the bladder. So it passes through the bladder wall and this opening into a region which is known as the trigone of the urinary bladder. This is the trigone of the urinary bladder. It passes through the bladder wall and enters into the lateral angle of the trigone of the urinary bladder. So what is the extent of ureter? It is extending from the hilum of the kidney to the lateral angle of the trigone of urinary bladder. So ureters are a pair of thick muscular tubes which is conveying urine from which is conveying urine from kidney to urinary bladder kidney to urinary bladder so what is the length of this ureter the length is 25 cm length is 25 cm or 10 inches and out of this 5 inches inches is abdominal and rest of the 5 inches is the pelvic part of the ureter so we know that it begins begins in the renal sinus as a dilatation known as the renal pelvis begins in renal sinus as a dilatation known as renal pelvis Then it emerges out to the renal hilum. So it emerges out to the renal hilum. Then it passes vertically downwards and it lies posterior to the peritoneum. That is, in, in, in throughout its course, it is retroperitoneal. That is very important. That is throughout its course it is retroperitoneal. Retroperitoneal. That is very important. Ureter is retroperitoneal in its course. Important point. That is it passes posterior to the peritoneum. So it passes retroperitoneal. Then in its course it is closing a region that is very important it crosses the common iliac artery 
at its this is the right and left common iliac artery and it, it bifurcates into internal iliac and external iliac artery here so the ureter passes anterior it passes in front of this bifurcation so ureter passes anterior to the bifurcation of the common iliac artery then at, then it enters the lesser pelvis here and at the lesser pelvis near the ischial spine it deviates andro medially and enters the base of the bladder so it crosses bifurcation of common iliac artery that is important now we will discuss about the constrictions of ureter constrictions of ureter draw the diagram first so this is the kidney this is the ureter Uh, this is the urinary bladder this is a trigon and this is the lateral angle of the trigon we know that it extends from the renal hilum to the to the lateral angle of trigon lateral angle of trigon that's the extent so, which are the regions of constriction of the ureter? We will mention it one by one. First of all, what is the first constriction? So, the first constriction is at the pelvic ureteric junction. So, this is the region of first constriction. That is one. That is pelvic ureteric junction. junction is the first constriction of the ureter and the second one is at the brim of lesser pelvis at the brim of the lesser pelvis where it is crossed by the bifurcation of the common iliac artery so we know that it is being crossed by the bifurcation of ureter causes the bifurcation of the common iliac artery at this region there is a constriction that is the second constriction second one at the brim of lesser pelvis where bifurcation of common iliac artery is crossed by the ureter then there is a region where it is being crossed by the vas deferens there is a region where it is being crossed by the vas deferens that's another point of constriction. Three. Ureter crossed by the vas deferens or broad ligament in case of females. Vas deferens in males and broad ligament in females. next region is the point where it enters the bladder wall the fourth region that is the vesico ureteric junction 
that is vesico ureteric junction is another point of constriction so and this is the narrowest part of ureter narrowest part the vesico ureteric junction is the narrowest part of the ureter and last point of constriction is at the point where it opens into the lateral angle of the trigon that is the fifth one that is lateral angle of trigon opening at the lateral angle of trigon where the ureter opens so these are the regions where the ureter shows constriction first one is the pelvic ureter junction next one at the brim of the lesser pelvis where the bifurcation of common iliac artery is closed by the ureter third one it where it is closed by the vast difference in males and blood ligament in females and the vesicular ureter junction this is important because it is the narrowest part of the ureter and at the lateral angle of the trigon where it opens into the lateral angle of the trigon so now we will discuss about the relations of the abdominal part of the ureter now we will discuss about the relations of the abdominal part first of all we will discuss about the anterior relation so we are discussing the anterior relation we will draw the right ureter first we will discuss the relation of the right ureter We are discussing the relations of the abdominal part only here. In the second part of this video, we will discuss about the relation of the pelvic part of the ureter. So, this is the right ureter. Now, we will discuss the left ureter also here. Left ureter. On both sides, it is being crossed by the gonadal artery. So, right, we will discuss about the right ureter first. You know that it is in the upper part, it is being crossed by a structure, which is the third part of the duodenum. This is the third part of duodenum. Next one, there is a gonadal artery. That is the gonadal vessels. Gonadal vessels rise anterior to the right ureter. Gonadal vessels. Next one, the branches of the superior mesenteric artery, that is the right colic artery and the iliocolic artery. This is the right colic artery and this is the iliocolic artery, which are branches of the superior mesenteric artery. And there is another structure, which is the uh, terminal part of the ileum. The terminal part of the ileum and the root of mesentery. And the structures are this is a right colic vessel right colic vessel iliocolic vessels iliocolic vessels then this one is the root of mesentery and terminal part of ileum
and the peritoneum because the ureter is retroperitoneal the peritoneum parietal peritoneum that is anterior to the ureter so these are the anterior relations of the right ureter now we will see the anterior relation of the left ureter here also it is crossed by the left gonadal artery so left gonadal artery this is left colic vessel then root of uh, sigmoid mesocolon root of sigmoid mesocolon and sigmoid colon and the peritoneum so these are the anterior relations of the left ureter so now we will discuss about the posterior relations of the ureter of the abdominal part of the ureter the posterior relations are We'll see that starting from renal hilum, it is passing anteriorly to a muscle which is known as iliopsoas muscle. So that is the psoas muscle is one of the posterior relation of the ureter and there is another nerve which is uh, forming the posterior relation that is the ureter is lying on this nerve that nerve is the genitofemoral nerve so genitofemoral nerve And at the brim of the lesser pelvis, it is being crossed by the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. Of common iliac artery at the brim of lesser pelvis. Iliac artery at brim of lesser pelvis. So the psoas muscle, so the ureter is lying on the psoas muscle and the nerve which is known as the genitofemoral nerve. So these structures forms the posterior relations of the ureter. And we will discuss about the medial relations of the abdominal part of the medial relation. This is about the medial relation of the right and left ureter. So we are saying that on the medial part of the right ureter. There is inferior vena cava. So this is the IVC. Here there is iota also. 
this is a highlighter abdominal highlighter so and this is the left renal vein left renal vein into this left renal vein there is a left gonadal vein as you saw this is a left gonadal vein and there is a another vein which is the inferior mesenteric vein here so this is which is the structure ivc and uh, this is the left renal vein opening in draining into the left renal vein as the left gonadal vein and this is the inferior mesenteric vein so relation of the left medial relation of the left this is the left sorry this is the right ureter so this is about the medial relation of right ureter So as you can see that which structure forms a medial relation of right ureter that is the inferior vena cava that is IVC inferior vena cava. Now we'll discuss about the medial relation of left ureter. So which forms a medial relation that is this is the left ureter the medial relations are the left gonadal vein and the inferior mesenteric vein so left gonadal vein and inferior mesenteric vein which forms a medial relation of left ureter and inferior mesenteric vein so these are the relations of the abdominal part of the ureter now we will discuss some MCQs from this topic. So the first question is, ureteric constrictions are all sides except first option pelvic ureteric junction. Uh, so we are having a constriction at this point and B lesser pelvis that is true and C at ischial spine. D is urinary bladder wall. So, so in options A, B and D we have constrictions at the ureter and the option the answer here is c there is no ureteric constriction at the ischial spine so the answer is option c ischial spine in all other sides we have constrictions at the ureter so option c is the right option here question number two narrowest part of the ureter is at that we have learned that the narrowest part of the ureter is at the ureterovesical junction or vesical ureteric junction that is at its opening into the bladder bone. So option D is the correct answer. Question number 3 is true about ureter R. Here there is more than one correct answer. So look at the options. Option A 5 cm long that is false. Option B 25 cm long that is right. So the length of ureter is 25 cm. Option C is wrong it is not 35 cm long. Option D totally retroperitoneal that option is correct because ureter is a retroperitoneal structure. Option E it enters to pelvis after closing the iliac vessel that is also correct. So option B, D and E are true. And question number true about ureter entry into the bladder here also there is more than one correct options look at the option a at the medial angle of trigon that is false option b at the lateral angle of trigon that is correct makes an angle yes it the ureter enters into the bladder making an angle that option is also correct option d is straight is false and E, it is valveless. It is also correct. 
सो ऑप्शन बी सी एंड ई आर करेक्ट हियर एंड क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव ट्रू अबाउट यूरिट हियर ऑल्सो दर इज मोर दैन वन करेक्ट आंसर सो ऑप्शन ए स्टार्ट एट द हाई लेंथ दैट इज करेक्ट बी चेंजेस इट्स डायरेक्ट डायरेक्शन एट द इशियल स्पाइन दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट ऑप्शन सी पेनिट्रेट द ब्लैडर वॉल विदाउट एनी वैल्यू इट इज करेक्ट enters the bladder at lateral angle of the cranium that is also correct and option e enters the pelvis in front of bifurcation of common iliac artery that is also correct so here all the options are correct and question number 6 left ureter is related to so remember about the relations of the left ureter quadratus lumborum that is incorrect option b left gonadal vessels so that is correct and option c superior mesenteric vein that is incorrect and option so left gonadal vessels is right and third one that is sigmoid mesocolon that is also correct and the internal iliac artery is also correct here and question number 7 all of the following structures close the right ureter anteriorly except so we know the All of the following structures closes the right ureter anteriorly, except terminal ileum is it closes the right ureter anteriorly. Vast difference it also closes the right ureter anteriorly. Genital femoral nerve. So genital femoral nerve forms the posterior relation of the right ureter. Option D, right colic and iliac colic. That is correct. So only option which is left out here is option C. That is genital femoral nerve which is forming the posterior relation of the right ureter and question number 8 is all of those all of the structure lie in relation to the left ureter except option a mesentery of the sigmoid colon that is correct bifurcation of common iliac artery that is correct quadratus lumborum and the uh, option d gonadal vessels gonadal vessels bifurcation of common iliac artery and mesentery of sigmoid colon or related to the left ureter so only structure which is left out here is option c quadratus lumbar that is the answer question number 9 is ureters are identified during surgery by the answer is peristalsis due to flow of urine so that is the answer and Uh, that's all about the ureter uh, we will discuss about the relations of the pelvic part of the ureter in the second section of this video thank you for watching this video to see more videos from our channel please subscribe to our channel medishare tips thank you